You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about entrepreneurship, and we're going to be talking about financing your startup, financing your business in the initial phases. For anyone who's starting a business, that question of how you finance that initial period before you really start making good sales, but when you're still uh, spending money on getting things going, uh, that's a really important question. And it was certainly a major concern for me. So I am going to talk about my experience um, of that period and and the things that that we did within my company, but also some of the other options that are out there as well and uh, and what the sort of advantages and disadvantages and options are uh, for you if this is something that you're taking on. So first off, I think it's useful to just um, have a bit of a framework for understanding this need for financing. Why do you need financing? How does it work, the financing of a startup and and a way that I found really useful to understand it is through what's called various names, but it's usually called something along the lines of the cash flow curve that it is sometimes the cumulative cash flow curve or it can be the net income curve or revenue curve. There's various ways in which this is sort of referred to, and I probably use the wrong terminology myself but It's pretty simple, and I'll see if I can put a copy um, of this curve in the show notes. But you can imagine it um, quite easily because it's a very simple curve. It's basically just on the y-axis you have cash, and on the x-axis you have time. And that y-axis of cash has a line at zero um, with negative below it and positive above it. And essentially, you start somewhere either at that uh, zero point or somewhere in the positive, and your curve goes downwards over time, normally into negative territory, or at least it goes curves down into a trough. And then over time, it comes out of that trough back into positive territory, and if all goes well, onward and upward. And what that cash flow curve or cumulative cash flow curve is describing is basically that initial period where you are spending more money than you're bringing in to get things going, to to finance the startup of the business. And you're gradually getting to a point where you're, you know, you're in negative territory, you, you're in debt, or at least spending more money than you have and financing that somehow. Uh, and before you start bringing in sales and bringing in revenue so that you can climb out of that trough and get back into the black or into positive cash flow or however you want to call it, uh, so that you're basically bringing in money that then starts supporting your business itself. And the question is, how do you actually cover that trough, that that period of time when you're in negative cash flow and you need to spend money on these startup costs before you're actually bringing in uh, revenue. So I find that sort of curve a useful way of thinking about it because for any business that you're doing, the shape of that curve can be very different. And it's the shape of that curve that is really going to determine what is going on for you in terms of financing. How shallow is that trough going to be? How shallow can you make it? And how long is it going to be in time before you come back out of the negative uh, territory into positive uh, cash flow? So that's the sort of problem that we're looking at. And I'll come back um, at the end to talking about how you can influence your financing needs by really trying to look carefully at what your own cash flow curve is going to be like um, and trying to make sure that you minimize your cash flow needs. But first of all, let's just talk through all the options that you've got for financing that um, initial period. And just as an overview, I'm going to talk about some options that are normally known as bootstrapping, where you are financing yourself. And that can either be through savings or through revenue itself. Then I'm going to talk about loans. Um, I will talk a little bit about financing through Uh, selling equity in your company through venture capital and so forth. And I'll also talk about some of the kind of business grants that you will probably find um, 
uh, floating around uh, and what, um, what they can be like. And then finally, I'll come on to talk about whether or not you really do need financing and, and how you can minimize your need for it. So first of all, um, bootstrapping. I guess this is the ultimate um, solution for any entrepreneur. I mean, in many cases, this, I think this is the best case scenario. Um, the, the term bootstrapping comes from the idea of um, pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. So in other words, you are kind of doing it yourself. Um, you are uh, financing your own growth. And basically, um, if you do uh, find a way of financing yourself, then obviously you don't have to sell equity in your business. You don't have to pay back loans. Uh, you don't uh, have all of the complications involved in getting finance from other people. And so if you can bootstrap your business, that's a, a great way to go. The two ways of doing that, I mean, this, this may sound pretty obvious, but I'll just go through the, the different options. The two ways of doing that um, are firstly through your own savings. So if you have money in the bank when you start your business, then you can draw down that money to finance the initial period before you start bringing in revenue. And the more savings you have, obviously, the longer you have in time before you cross over into that negative territory um, where you actually are start, you do have a need for financing because you have negative cash flow. Um, as long as you're able to draw in cash from your savings to the business, that can support you in that initial period. And I did this. I actually had, I think, about £10,000 in savings that I had accumulated over a sort of 10-year period in my 20s. Um, from just keeping keeping money um, saved up when I was doing uh, consultancy work and other things, and that really really helped um, to to start the business. It actually was what I used to start the business. My business partner also had savings, and so we both put money into the business um, to to get things moving. It wasn't enough for us, um, and I'll talk more about the other things that we did. But it certainly helped, and it enabled us to actually get started um, and begin um, a business that wasn't going to make revenue for a little while because we had to develop some software and do other things. So that is really a, um, a great thing to do if you can. Obviously, it's, it depends on um, building up the savings and that can take significant time. I guess one thing to say about this question of having um, savings is that it, may, it means that um, it is harder, much, much harder to do um, a new entrepreneurial venture if you already have outstanding debt of any kind. And also, if you already have significant financial commitments, um, one of the things for me was that I, you know, I didn't have any debt, I did have savings, and I also didn't have any major financial commitments like just having had kids or just having bought a house or anything like that. Um, so I would say that, you know, it's, it's definitely going to make the startup period easier if you have some savings and if you don't have major financial commitments, um, because that will help you uh, reduce your need for financing and it'll give you a much easier start to the business. The other form of bootstrapping is essentially financing the growth of your business through revenue itself. And this is essentially a way of saying, don't spend any money until you've got it. And it's, it's a really difficult thing to do because whatever business you start up, you're, you're going to be very focused on the things that you need to put in place in order to be a credible um, business. So you're going to think about how important it is for your website to look good and for you to maybe have some kind of technology or software to um, provide the solution that you're going to provide. And there are not that many businesses that you that, are, that it's obvious um, as to how you could immediately start selling before you invest any further in the business. If you have an expertise and a consultancy, you know, that's one of the most obvious ways in which you may be able to do this. But what I would say is that I think it's something that I didn't think about nearly as hard enough as to how we could just start selling as quickly as possible and get revenue to finance the further development of the business. 
and I didn't put nearly as much time into it as I think it merits as an uh, option. In my opinion now, looking back on it, whatever the business is that you're doing, even if you intend to develop some kind of technological solution in the future, you've already got some value of some kind to offer to someone. And if you can start selling as quickly as possible and use revenue to finance the growth of the business, it is so healthy as an approach because it always puts you in a much better financing position yourself. You avoid having to go into debt. It also means that you're very focused on customer needs and on what will sell. And so in my opinion, looking at how to revenue finance the growth of your business from day one is a really, really healthy, important and valuable thing to do. It's not easy. And it also puts you immediately into that uncomfortable position of going out and selling as quickly as possible when it's much easier and more comfortable to do all of the interesting things like develop your website and develop your technology and your software and sort out, you know, all sorts of other stuff that um, that is less emotionally challenging than selling. But, you know, if there's a short answer to the best way to finance the growth of your startup, it is through bootstrapping and in particular revenue financed you know with a bit of your uh, your own savings if you really need to so that is i think my main message about this is to seriously look at revenue financing however it may not be enough and it, it wasn't enough for me um partly because i didn't look at it as in detail enough but also partly because we did have software that we wanted to develop so i guess the next thing to talk about is loans and I have mentioned in a previous podcast, I think if there's one thing that uh, that loans can be uh, really useful for, it's developing your entrepreneurial ventures. Um, I think that um, taking out loans for consumption items is a really bad idea uh, in terms of your personal finance. Um, and it's you know, this is one of the problems that we have at the moment is that people load up on credit to get um, nice toys um, and then don't feel able to take risks in entrepreneurship because they have such high expenses to maintain. Um, but if you use loans to start your business, you know, then you are potentially investing in your future income generation. And that is a really potentially useful thing to use loans for, uh, in my opinion. And I, I certainly use loans. There are various ways that you can uh, take out loans. The easiest is just to go to friends and family. And that's what I did. There was a self-made um, businessman, entrepreneur who I knew through my family, although we came, became uh, friends independently. Um, and I basically um, went to him uh, for loans uh, for the company. Initially, we talked about um, him taking a role uh, uh, taking some share ownership in the business. And I'll talk about that a bit more um, when I talk about selling equity. But in the end, we ended up um, just taking loans uh, from him. And I actually took very significant loans. Uh, we borrowed nearly £100,000 over a period of a year to develop the business. And we ended up um, paying back about £150,000 um, with all the interest when we finally paid off the loans. So that was the way that we financed the business. That was the main loan. I had also borrowed a couple of thousand pounds from my father, but that was nothing in comparison to, to what we ended up borrowing from this businessman entrepreneur. And it took us five years to pay off those loans. So loans can be uh, one way of financing the business. If you don't go to friends and family, there are other places that you can get loans. There are websites which actually are organized for businesses um, where you can um, you can take out loans from other people. You can obviously try and get a bank loan as well, although it is very difficult. But I think the, the main thing here is if you do take out loans, um, friends and family are the easiest way to do that. You already have an existing relationship with these people. They have um, a better ability to, to see what it is that you're doing and, and they know your track record and how trustworthy you are and so forth. And they have a vested interest in wanting to help you as well. So the next option for financing your startup is to sell equity in the company, to give away some part ownership of the business 
um, to somebody else in return for finance, in return for cash that will help support and finance the business through that uh, initial part of your cash curve. And this is sort of the classic um, idea that, um, that came from that 1990s startup boom of, you know, having a cool idea and getting venture capital firms to finance your idea as a business. And, um, you know, the advantages that people see in it are that in doing so, you don't have the personal risk associated with taking on loans. Of course, I was personally liable for the loans that we took on. And if I had sold um, part of the business ownership instead, um, then I wouldn't be liable for a loan because it wouldn't be a loan. It would just be an investment that somebody was making into the business. And that is uh, appealing to people because it, it reduces um, the risk that you have. It's actually in, in many ways a very expensive way of financing your business because if you think about it, a venture capital firm is only going to want to invest in a business if they can make a significant return on their investment because it is very, very risky investing in startups. And consequently, they're going to want at least a 20-fold return on the investment that they make or something of that order because that has to cover all of the startups that they fund which don't give them that kind of return. And consequently, they're going to be very, very uh, clear about making sure that they're able to um, do whatever measures they need to in order to ensure that they get that return. So if you look at it as a kind of loan, assuming that your company is going to be successful, when those investors want to finally exit, they're going to want to see a far higher return than they would have got if it was just a normal loan because they are taking on some of that risk. And that means that it is actually a really expensive way of getting financing. You pay for reducing your own risk as an entrepreneur and you will pay very highly um, to do that. The other thing that happens with venture capital is that you see um, small startups turning into um, machines to try and get financing. They become completely preoccupied with doing presentations to um, venture capital firms or f other financing um, sources. And they, that's what the business becomes about. There's quite a good movie um, called Startup.com, um, which shows a startup going horribly wrong. And it's a documentary, and it it's actually really shows how focused they were on just getting financing. That was what their whole approach was about. Um, and... It's sort of the opposite to that approach of revenue financing, whereas revenue financing will focus you exactly on your customer needs. Um, financing through venture capital or, or through selling equity in your company will focus you on making presentations to get finance. If you do want to consider this route, it's not only venture capital firms. You can also sell um, part of your business uh, to friends and family and get them to invest in the business. But again, I, I think you, know, you have to think about that being a more expensive choice for yourself because you're asking them to take on risk. And in order to do that, they are going to want a higher return for the investment that they make. Now, the amount that your share in the company that you're selling to them is worth is something that obviously will just be a market agreement between you and them. But you are effectively trying to offload risk. And in order to do that, you should expect to pay more for that um, in terms of the amount that you have to give away of your business. I looked into this in the beginning with the entrepreneur businessman who lent money to get the business started. When I initially approached him, I was approaching him for an investment in the company. And it, it became clear to me that in, in negotiating it with him, that doing so would be significantly more expensive in terms of how much I would need to give away of my uh, new business, and also in terms of how much control he would expect to be able to have over the course of the business. And I guess the question comes, you know, if you if you are setting up a business to give yourself freedom to pursue, you know, a, a venture that you really believe in that and also that you um, hope to get more financial freedom for yourself through, then why are you trying to offload risk onto others um, and pay more to do so? Um, you know, in, in a sense, that seems to me to be sort of 
uh, reducing some of the benefit that you have of owning the business yourself in the first place and having it as, as your venture. So in the end, I chose not to go down that path. And I really think that it is an expensive um, and complicated and difficult path to take if it's one that you want to pursue. If you do go down that path, I think it still makes a lot more sense going to friends and family and getting their investment um, rather than going to um, venture capital firms because you have the relationships in place, because they're in a better place to know your business and so forth. But my view would be try not to give away ownership of your business because it's all you've got. In the early stages, there really isn't much apart from your ideas um, and your determination to, to make it happen. There is a role for it. You know, you may uh, already have maxed out the extent of risk that you, you are able to take in terms of loans and in terms of your own savings. And you may also decide that you want to involve um, friends and family in the business. You want them to have an investment. That's obviously a choice to make. Um, but it is complicated, and I think, uh, in my view, uh, if you can avoid it, um, it's better to do so. The last source of funding that I want to talk about is really the comedy source of funding, which is grants. And this is something that you will no doubt come across. Um, you will find that there will be academic grants or government grants for entrepreneurs, and there will be some kind of inducements to start up a business in a particular area or to have some kind of relationship with a university or, or whatever. And this looks like free money, and who doesn't want free money? I mean, that sounds great. There's some kind of uh, grant that will give you um, assistance in starting up. I actually did get involved in a scheme, not exactly the startup stage, but um, early in the development of the company um, with a university, which was um, a grant which um, increased your spending on R&D. So if you invested a particular amount, they would give you a certain amount of investment on top of that. Um, but the strings and terms and conditions attached meant that it was a complete waste of time and money and a source of a lot of stress and effort that in the end I, I wish we hadn't done. And that's actually, I think, a very, very common uh, experience with these grants. It really is true that there is no such thing as a free lunch. And whatever the grant is that you're seeing, if it's a government grant or an academic grant, there is always bureaucracy involved, there's reporting and auditing involved. And in the case of my experience, if it's with a university, there's another party involved who have their own agenda and they want to do research um, using their part of the grant and they want to involve their staff in, in doing things that are actually no use to you. And, you know, it, it turned into um, a bit of a nightmare for us um, that, you know, we thought we were going to get funding that would help us develop our software. Um, but what it actually turned into was an awful lot of paperwork and management and difficulty in, um, in kind of aligning the interests of the university and of ourselves. And at the end of the day, I don't think it was worth it at all. So I would not touch these things with a barge pole myself um, because I think they do end up being far more onerous than you think and you will pay for them in some way or another having said that you know and i've got no doubt that you will come across some kind of grants opportunities and it's up to you to investigate them and see um, whether you think it's worth it for yourself but um, my view is is that um, there's always costs um, in one way or another even if they're not obvious in the beginning I think the final thing that I just want to say about financing is really to question how much you need the money. You know, there is an assumption in starting up a business that you're going to need a lot of financing. And I have to say that we took out loans to finance the business before I really feel um, that I knew how to wisely spend that money. And consequently, in the first year, we spent money on stuff that I don't think was at all worthwhile. Um, the guy who lent us the money was of the view that it was very important to have an office from the beginning as a place for people to come and see that we meant business and that we were, you know, actually um, here to stay and so forth. Virtually nobody came to visit us in the first year. And it was nice to have an office, but I think actually uh, we could have significantly reduced our financing needs if we hadn't 
taken that uh, office out. There's lots of other things that we spent money on that I seriously question how much value we got out of it in the period before we started making revenue. Not everything. You know, we really did need that software developed and it was a very important part of our business. Although, uh, interestingly enough, the first revenue that we got, we didn't even need our own bespoke software in order to to do. And that just goes to show you that you know, there were opportunities for revenue financing that um, that we were less aware of. So I do think it's really, really good to question how much you actually need financing and to look extremely carefully at what you think you need to spend money on because the temptation is always to spend money rather than go out and sell because selling is psychologically so much harder. And so I think if you can reduce your financing needs, if you can keep that curve as shallow as possible and that timeline before you get into the positive as short as possible, then you can really reduce the amount of money that you actually need to borrow and you can, can simplify your life massively in the process because the more money you need to borrow the more complicated it's going to be and the bigger the stakes are in terms of the amount of, uh, of revenue that you'll need to earn so i would suggest um that that is the other key key thing um that i sort of learned about financing the first one is the importance of revenue financing and the second one is you really probably don't need the money nearly as much as you think you do. And it's worthwhile questioning um, just how much you do need the money. So I hope that is helpful. I'd love to hear any feedback that you have about this and to hear any experiences that you have with your business. And good luck with your ventures. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.